Mark. Welcome. What's up? Welcome, What's mate. Up? What's up? Oh, that was a very kind thing of Patty to say. I love Patty and the, the guys over at Thinkific. And super stoked to be here with you, Liam. Let's let's talk summits. I'm excited to be talking about your program here and all the cool things that you got going on with it. So how's the how's the live stream been going so far? Yeah, it's been it's been really interesting, man. Like we've um, we've had some amazing guests that have run amazing summits. Like obviously Patty from Thinkific, from the corporate point of view, uh, running multiple summits. Uh, you said I think at twelve that he's he's done now, uh, and then we've had um, someone like Tom Morks who has done more than twelve uh, different clients, uh, and Steve Olsher who, uh, you know, he's he's been interviewing people for. Uh, what can I say centuries obviously that would be a lie but you know <laughs> like so long since podcasting kind of just started so all that really valuable information there and um, people just talking about how the trajectory of of summits is um, you know it's really moving in this direction that people are getting more interest more demand from sponsors wanting to uh, understand well, understanding the the power of a virtual summit how to leverage that for their own corporate brands and, and stuff like that. And then, you know, yourself uh, coming in and, and creating a, a whole company dedicated to summits, like you've gone all in really, haven't you on summits? So do, before we jump into all of that though, do you want to just introduce yourself uh, for everyone here today? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, hey everybody. I am Dr. Mark T. Wade. I am the founder of Virtual Summit Software. Uh, and I actually am a healthcare professional by trade. I'm a postural neurologist, so I have a couple doctorates and 50-some-odd certifications, so I started off in the health industry, the health space, with an actual brick-and-mortar business, decided to go into online business so I could reach and help more people, Uh, and like most of us, kind of struggled at the beginning to get that online business going until I heard about this concept of a virtual summit. So um, we ran a summit and we actually uh, then built our company, which is called the American Posture Institute. I have several, several companies now, but built that company into a multi-million dollar business using virtual summits. And still to this day, we do two to four multi-day summits and four to eight one-day summits every year in that business. And matter of fact, last month, we just wrapped up our Digital Dementia Summit um, into a whole new niche or industry for us. And we can talk about that more later if it comes up. But uh, yeah, we did over 26,000 leads and about $75,000 just from the summit. So for the last seven years, summits have been my life. And uh, now I spend most of my time tinkering around in the back end of, you know, softwares and stuff like that for summits. But uh, I am 100% a proponent, a believer in summits, but not only in summits, but in making sure you get help. Uh, and, and make sure you do your summit right. And so having like a guide, a mentor, a coach, a program like Liam's talking about here is something I firmly uh, believe is important to have. So yeah, that's that's a little bit about me, Liam. Uh, we can we can chat in any direction you want to go. But yeah, that- oh man, like talking about like uh, like how it's going so far. I think uh, you know it's it's getting better and better. Uh, having someone like you on, especially for people who are watching. Uh, which I who I know have had questions around, uh, you know, do service uh, or product based industries work like uh, online or brick and mortar businesses like institutes and foundations, uh, big corporations? Like, can you just talk a little bit about how that st- you you know you t- you introduced how it started for you and how like it's obviously continued to work for you. Uh, where you're still doing multi uh, multiple summits uh, every year. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I personally believe that you can do a summit in any niche or industry. Uh, and honestly, the more kind of particular or niche the industry or the the kind of the topic is, I think even the more successful it can be. Now, I've, I've heard Liam and me and you have kind of laughed about this in the past. Like we've heard people say, oh, summits are dead, right? Like, And every time I hear that, I just think in the back of my mind, like summits aren't dead. You just didn't run a good summit and probably because you didn't have the guidance or the teaching to be able to do that. But I know people like Liam, myself, and you know, I've got so many friends that are running summits on a monthly basis. I, I see people running summits all the time 
and they're crushing it. So I know summits aren't dead. Summits are beyond dead. They're actually, they're, they're, they're getting better and better because the information, the knowledge and the ability to run summits is getting better. Now, as far as niches and stuff, like I love when I hear like a particular kind of a strange niche, if you will, um, somebody running a summit in that, because I typically see that they do extremely well. Um, and this, this isn't necessarily a particular strange niche, but I have some friends that ran a summit in the insurance business. Now, like insurance, most of us kind of think insurance is a little, you know, like it's a little bit older. It's like a different style of work. You don't typically think, like online marketing strategies, like we're seeing happen regularly, like kind of in the, in the IM space, for example, but they ran this summit and they absolutely crushed it. Why? Because most of the people in that space have never seen anything like this before. Uh, So when you're, if you're in one of those spaces, whether in in a brick and mortar business, because I am in the health space, you know, I'm all over the world kind of helping or talking about summits for healthcare professionals. And we see them take summits and set them up to actually bring patients into their physical practices. So like, I believe summits can, can work in any type of industry in any type of way. And one thing that's just like, I feel like it's kind of popping up into my mind, Liam is also, I don't think you should worry too much on necessarily the size of the summit. I think a lot of times, like, of course, we all want to run like 26,000 or 50,000 person summits, but a majority of my summits, like especially our one day summits, they may only generate two or 3,000 leads. But those two to 3,000 leads with a post summits profit strategy or a way to monetize that after the summit, that's a quarter of a million dollars for us. Two to 3,000 leads from a, like a one day summit, for example, or anything like that. Like that's, that's a lot of money. So don't even like, if you're sitting there going, well, I'm worried, maybe I can't do a 25,000 lead summit. Don't worry about it. Like really all you need is two, you know, two to 5,000 leads. And that's, that's well over a six figure business right there. So that was just something on on top of my mind. I don't know if you had anything like that come up, Liam, but uh, it's something that like, I hear people kind of, you know, like a concern people have or worry they have is, well, maybe it won't work in my niche or what if I don't even have that many people in my niche? Like you don't have to have a huge summit. You just need what you really need. And this is why summits are so powerful is you need a engaged and qualified list or, or audience, right? That's what you need. And that's exactly what a summit builds for you. So, so I'd like to just throw it out to anyone that's in the chat that has, they think they've got a really weird niche that they are thinking, well, like no way this is like, oh, well, if they're considering, well, how, it, how could this work? Uh, and, and they're deciding, well, maybe this is not going to work for me because it's, it's such a weird niche. So if you think you've got a weird niche, throw it in uh, the chat. One guy here, Will uh, Lenson says he's in real estate. Um, so how could a summit be useful for real estate? And I, I've got so many answers here, but Mark, I'll, I'll hand that over to you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, real estate is a great niche. I mean, for real estate, you, you, well, depending on what type of real estate you're in, like, I'm just going to use an example that I'm familiar with, but I mean, you can use it across the board with real estate, but for sure, real estate is about collecting engaged and qualified leads. So you could run an entire multi-day summit around this. And, and, and the way I usually talk about it, like the, 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 for me, the way my brain works best is looking at the problem. So the audience you're trying to, to bring, like the audience you're going to bring into your community, essentially you're going to be selling or helping them with something. Okay. So in real estate, you're going to be helping them probably find a house. So for me, I would narrow it down. I would do something like a one day summit. I would take the problem which is they need somebody to help them find the houses or, or find like the appropriate houses. I'd take that problem and I'd run a one day summit around that problem. Now, the cool thing is with summits and with Facebook now, I mean, obviously, and, and this is going to be super niche, super specific. So whoever asks this, you're getting some amazing free advice here. The way I would exactly run this is how I would tell my healthcare professionals to run this. I would actually look for referral sources in my community. So like, for example, if I'm in the online space, I may be looking for speakers, you know, across the world. But if you're trying to fill a local niche, find people in your local area that have also those, those, those audiences, for example. So um, I'm not super familiar in this niche, but we could say like, if we're trying to get people that are looking for, for houses, it could be, you know, anybody that's kind of in that sphere, you could have them be speaking on the summit. And again, if you're doing it as a one day summit, for example, you don't need 
you don't need 30 speakers. You could only have five, five to 10 speakers. So you can keep it super small, super specific. And then you can target the, um, the ads or the promotions to the demographics there in your area. So that way you're not like, you're not getting this in front of people. Like if you're in Texas, you're not broadcasting it in Florida, right? So you're maintaining quality engaged leads. Now, the most important thing with this is they come on, they get some information, they get inspired, they get motivated. Now they're ready to take the next step. Who are they going to turn to? Who are they going to look to? They're going to look to you because they've spent this time building a relationship with you and you've created no like and trust. So, I mean, real estate would be super, like a super effective and super powerful. Now, if you're doing something where maybe you're not selling an actual physical house where they need to be in this like zip code, but maybe you're selling information or you got a product that you can sell to help them. Like, like maybe you're saying like, Hey, I want to sell you this course that helps you figure out what, what's the best way to buy a house or what's the best way to find a real estate broker or whatnot. Now you can expand that to like, for example, a multi-day summit and you can get speakers from all over the world and you can attract your audience from all over the, you know, maybe all over the U S or Canada, depending on where you're at, because now that information is virtual information and you can sell that in an online format. So you see the same topic can be done in two different ways, depending on what your desired outcome is. So that's just some, some quick things off the top of my head there, Liam. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great, man. Um, and I see the, the, the questions kind of flying in here and I did put it out to the chat. And so picking the, the, maybe the, the nichest niche, if you like, um, from, from this, uh, Shelly's written peer support specialists. And I'd love to get your, your opinion on, on this. Uh, you might be able to read it as well, Mark, but peer support specialist, uh, former behavioral health patients employed to support people struggling with serious or severe mental health challenges. So I'm assuming here it's peer support specialist for people suffering from mental health. All right, Shelly, you're trying to challenge me over here. Let's, uh, if you could do this for me, Shelly, because what I need to know to be able to give you this information is what's the number one problem that you're going to be solving for them or that they're searching, like that they have. Can you just go ahead and type in there for me, Shelly? What's the num- what's the problem? Like, what's the problem that they have? Because the bottom line is your summit is going to be built around a problem. If it's a multi-day summit, it's going to be a series of problems. Because the point of it is we're trying to solve these problems to some degree in this summit. Because the power of a summit comes from solving a problem and building a relationship. That's how we create this know, like, and trust, which is going to allow them to go forward with you in your customer journey. So this is super important. Like for customer journey, like when we want people to actually go to the next step, which is to buy something from us, we have to have built some rapport. Okay. We have to have this. So Shelly, if you want to put whatever that problem is, okay. So staying well, Shelly says, staying well at working in this helping profession. It's stressful working with people, people in crisis. So keeping our own wellness while helping others find theirs. Perfect. This is great. So what I would do is I would create it. Now, when it comes to uh, topic of summit, it's super important that we keep it in our audience's terminology and we keep it simple. A lot of times we like to glorify or sexify, like we like to spice up the titles to make them sound even cooler based on what we think. But honestly, a confused mind says no, right? And what we want them to do is we want them to feel like we're actually talking directly to them. We're not worried about all these other people that have similar problems. We're only worried about the people who have this problem. So you could do something like um, how like how to not go – and I'm just going to make stuff up here, Shelly, but you, 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 you'll get my drift and you can kind of you, – you can manipulate it or massage it to make it sound even better. But like, you know – how to not get sick while helping people stay well or something like that. You know, like how to not like how to not go crazy while helping while while giving everything you've got or something that that, you know, those people are going to go, oh, my gosh, you know, they're talking to me about this. And so now that you have your problem. So this is how I set this up. When I have my problem, I now identify depending on if I'm going to do a multi-day summit or a one day summit, how many different solutions do I want to provide? So let's say, if, let's say if we're going to do a one-day summit, we're going to do seven solutions. So I'll write out seven solutions to this problem that we just identified. Those seven solutions are now your sessions and also help you identify what speakers you want. Now, if your program's virtual, like we were just saying, you can, do, you can take people from anywhere in the world and you're going to be selling a virtual program. So it can, it can be 
you know, more expanded and it's going to be all across the internet, essentially. Now, if it's going to be like actual brick and mortar people or people you're trying to get into your practice or something like that, then again, you're going to be looking for people in your demographic that are going to have the audiences that you're trying to reach. So hopefully that sheds some lights on that. That is definitely a very niche one. And I promise you, Shelly, if you do a summit along a title like that, don't, again, like I was saying, don't worry about getting 10,000. Don't worry about getting 25,000 because it may be hard to get, I mean, I don't know your niche specifically, but it may be hard to get 25,000 peer support specialists. I don't know how many there are in the world, but imagine if you got a thousand of them that are desperately searching for the answer that you now provide. And let's assume your program is, let's just average it. Let's say the next step, like you've ran your summit. You now have a thousand people that are engaged, that know, like, and trust you. And let's just say your, your next thing is just a hundred dollar monthly membership. A hundred times a thousand. What is that, Liam? I'm, I may be off here. Is that 10,000, I think, or is that? A hundred times by a thousand. That's 100,000. Uh, that's a hundred thousand. Okay. Now that would be if everybody did it. Let's, let's go like 10%. So let's say a hundred of them. And a hundred. What is that? That's more like a, is that a thousand or 10,000? I'm horrible at math. Yeah, no, that's, that's 10,000. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, Liam. Cause I, I suck at math over here. You're, you're saving me so, so much, but so that that's 10,000 recurring monthly. If you had a thousand engaged, 10% of them bought a hundred dollar reoccurring program. That's $10,000 a month. I mean, could you use an extra $10,000 a month? If not, you can send it my way. I'll gladly take it. Right. But understand it's not, it doesn't have to be huge summits. Granted, if you can do a huge one, that's, that's awesome too. But I just want everybody to understand a thousand engaged leads, 10% of those at a hundred dollars, that's 10,000 a month. Now, if you increase your conversions even more, I mean, you just get more and more and more. So uh, good, good, good niche there, Shelly. I like that one and keep me posted on how that goes. I'd be really interested to hear how that, how that runs for you. Yeah, well, uh, she's just replied here. Awesome ideas, and and I think you know you you have shared some gold here. So uh, everyone should uh, give a bit of a round of applause. I wish there was a, a clapping button here uh, on Zoom <laughs> for that answer, Mark. That was brilliant. Uh, and I just wanted to touch on uh, something else in, in regards to that, which is uh, this this niche here, peer support specialists. Like, if there's not or any niche out there where there's not much information, or it's difficult to find information on how to f- do something or figure out a solution to a problem, then this is a perfect place to, to do a summit. I mean, my first summit was on um, how uh, to generate leads from LinkedIn. So how for a business uh, person that's on LinkedIn, how do they use it to generate leads? And there, there wasn't very much information out there. There wasn't many people that knew they could use LinkedIn to generate leads. It, they just thought of it as a, a platform for, for careers and putting up your, your resume and that's it. And, and so there wasn't enough information out there. And that's what I think helped that particular summit be such a success because there wasn't enough information out there accessible to solve that problem. And, I, and I'm assuming uh, here, Shelley, that maybe there's not very much information out there for these people. And so a summit could definitely work really well um, when there's a lack of info. Cool. Well, yeah, Mark, um, you've personally obviously been involved in summits quite a lot. Like what, what, and and for seven years, I think you you mentioned earlier, what makes you think that virtual summits are still on that trajectory of growth or what makes you excited about summits for the next 12 months? I mean, for me, in, in the sense of summits, like there is no more, there is no tool more powerful than a virtual summit when it comes to solving a problem and building a relationship. I, I look at them as, as high value, low risk opportunities. Most of the other things out there, you got lead magnets, you got things like that, like people can put their email in, but like they're low, they're, they're relatively low value. I mean, and, and nobody take this personally, I, my stuff's the same way. I mean, we may try and put a lot of value into it, but there's nothing as powerful as a virtual summit. So here's the difference. What I see changing with summits it's not that there's going to be like that, that, that summits are going to get less or they're going to become less effective. I, I believe they're actually only going to get more effective and more powerful and more of them run. And I don't see that as a bad thing because what's going to end up happening and what needs to happen with summits is we need, to, we need to put more energy and effort into our summits. What I typically see between a good summit and a bad summit, the difference is somebody took the time and energy and effort to figure out how to run a good summit. Somebody else tried to throw it together and get it done and just get something out there. So the more niched in in topic specific you get, 
the more effective and successful your summit is going to be. And that's what I'm personally seeing. I see people run kind of generic summits and um, they don't put a lot of time or intention behind them and they still generate leads. I mean, they still get a couple thousand leads, which is still great. But the people that take the time and the energy to really think it through and actually look at, for example, not just the summit, but they look at their post-summit profit strategy, everything on the back end, how they're actually going to utilize that audience, you know, and how they're going to help them on the customer journey. When they do that, these summits are huge success. We're talking about, I mean, imagine taking your business, like I've started multiple businesses now. I've run multiple six, seven, and multi-seven figure companies. And for the most of them, I had to start them at the beginning with no audience. And what I typically see, Liam, and maybe you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but I see a lot of people spending so much time and energy on trying to build out products like a course or a program or something. They put all this time, energy, and effort into it. And it's a beautiful thing, but then they don't have anybody to sell it to. There's no audience there. Like we, in my opinion, we need to be focused on building an audience and then listening to what your audience has to say about what to build for them. Because the second mistake I see people make is they build this thing out. And then when they do finally get an audience, the audience says, well, we don't want this or we don't want that. We want something like this. And then you have to redo it or change it anyways, or it doesn't convert the way you want it to. So the best way to really to, to go into business anywhere, like whether you've got a new business, you're just getting started, or you got a, a successful business, or you're trying to launch a new product or program, anything we do, any, any objective or campaign or program we run, we always put a summit on the front end of it. Depending on what it is, it may be a multi-day summit or a one-day summit, but we're always putting this on the front end. And this is really how I see summits evolving is not just one-off events. We're not just doing summits like as if it was a launch and expecting the summit by itself to be the gold. The summit will generate the audience and that will be beneficial for the, the rest of your business. That's really where I see uh, summits continuing to grow and be. There's a question here from Will uh, that's asking, how much time, energy, effort to create an average summit? Like what are the details one has to address? Well, that, that's a great question, Will. And, and this is going to vary, uh, you know, obviously, but on average, well, the first cool thing is, um, as I mentioned, the founder of the Virtual Summit software. So using the Virtual Summit software really a, a eliminates a most of the time it takes to actually build out a summit. I mean, before that, you, you would have to spend a decent amount of time kind of building out the templates and the, all the speaker pages and stuff. But that's just gone now with Virtual Summit software. As far as the strategy and building out the summit, everything else that you need to do, I mean, on average, like an, an average summit, like a multi-day summit, let's say a multi-day summit, three to four days, 20 to 30 speakers could be done in about 120 days. You could do it less. Okay. If you're experienced, you know how to rock and roll these, you could do it in 90 days, maybe even a little less. I would say caution on giving yourself a little bit more time because you know, it's always better to just have a little more time in case you need it. And anywhere from about, you know, three to probably five hours a week minimum, maybe upwards of about 10 hours a week. Your first summit is always going to take you a little bit more time. But I promise you, after you run one summit, you're going to want to run more. And after you've done the process, you start to see, you, you'll see how much easier it's going to be and how easy you can do it. You'll have these systems in place, uh, especially with programs like Liam's here. He's going to, he's going to shorten that learning curve for you. So it's going to, he's going to erase a lot of that time and energy of having to figure it out on your, on your own. You're going to be able to just follow his format or his plan and get it together. That paired with the Virtual Summit software, honestly, you could probably have a good summit. It, it, now, keep in mind your interviews, you're still going to have to do the interviews unless you're doing a presentation-based summit, um, which is cool. We do a lot of those too, but most likely you're going to do like an interview or a hybrid Based summit. So with those, you still got to allocate your, you know, the time for you to actually do the interview. So the 30 minutes to an hour, but outside of that, it really does not need to take a ton of time or energy. What would you say, Liam? What's the, what's the kind the kind of average amount of time you would think it would take? Yeah, I reckon about, uh, you know, the 90 day, if, if you give yourself enough time, like I, I love the idea inside Virtual Summit Academy, we've got a 90 day uh, kind of checklist uh, that you're asking for there, Will, uh, which we call our action planner, uh, 90 day action planner. And I think if you're, we've had some 
sorry, there's something on my tongue there. <laughs> there's uh, a few of the previous guests were talking about being able to pull, pull it together in, uh, you know, just a few weeks. And and I think if you're doing this for your first time, it's a multi-day summit, then, you know, 90 days is is gives you enough time uh, to do everything right, uh, follow the uh, the checklist and and knock things off one by one without getting too stressed or or overwhelmed. Uh, we've done them where it's been in a lot less time, but it does add that extra element of stress and and it can get extra tiring as well. And we when we did it shorter than that, we weren't able to get the results uh, that we would normally see if we spent ninety days or more uh, in preparing for the summit. So uh, I'd encourage people to spend as much time as they need so they don't get overwhelmed, but they yet yeah, check off everything in the checklist to make sure uh, they're on the right track. Yeah, I'm, w- I'm with you on that too. And so uh, essentially like the time wise, like honestly, you should be more focused on getting the result, right? Like what is the result you want? So I usually talk, and this kind of goes to Julie's question, suggestions on getting speakers. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to get speakers and it's actually easier than you think to get speakers. The thing with speakers is I wouldn't worry so much about getting the one speaker I'd be more focused on getting a speaker at this level. And another misconception with speakers is a lot of summit hosts, they try and fill their summits with all like A-level influencers. Now, when it comes to A-level influencers, some of them may promote your summit, but many are just honestly, they're not going to do it. So you don't want to stuff your summit with all A-level influencers. You'd rather have a summit primarily with a lot of those B levels, the ones who have a, are experts at something, they got a good audience, but they're still hustling to build their brand and their audience, they're going to be more willing to promote your summit, which is going to help you get it. Now, to get your objective, like I use something called list potential. So I look at all the speakers that are speaking on my summit and what, what is their average? Let's just say we're going to guess at their, their list size. If we have 10 speakers with average lists of about 5,000, we've got about a 50,000 person or a, a list potential. Now, using that, you can then start to get an idea of what your goal, like what, how many leads you're going to generate, okay? With that, you could also reverse it. So for you here, Will, like to determine, or, or maybe even Julie, how many speakers should you have? Well, that should probably depend on how many leads you want to generate with your summit. You take those leads and you reverse it based on the list potential to determine how many leads you're going to need. So that's how I usually work my summits is I look at like, what's the minimum amount of leads I'm trying to get in this niche or this topic based on what it is, a uh, thousand or 5,000 or 10,000. Based on that, I determine how, what's the list potential I need and then the average list size for my speakers. And then that determines how many speakers I'll need or want on the summit. Nice, man. I think, you know, there is a bit of a process here for us that have done it quite a few times. Uh, we know it and, you know, once you know the formula or the process, it becomes easy and you can use it in so many different areas of your life. You know, if you want to do podcasting or invite partnerships or do cold outreach, uh, you know, there's so many elements to the virtual summit that uh, can be uh, used again and again and again in so many other different areas of your business. So uh, it's a great, it's a great almost training ground for someone who's just starting off their business for the first time and they want to learn, you know, cold outreach, influencer marketing, affiliate marketing, uh, you know, interviewing, like the list goes on, right? <laughs> there's, there's so many elements here that uh, will benefit you moving forward uh, post summit. It's been a pleasure. You rock. If you're on here, take action, take action, take action. Thanks, Liam. And it was nice to meet everybody on here. Have a great day.